we're talking about apologetics, apologetics is all about the arguments, right? Arguments for the existence of God, arguments for the truth of Christianity, arguments for why Jesus is the God of the universe, and that we should believe in him. I love the arguments. You know, I, I love to think of all the reasons, the good reasons to believe something. But I know something that I've fallen into, a trap I've fallen into often was that my love for arguments has often made me argumentative. And I think we run the risk if we become too argumentative of turning off our audience. You know, I want to have great arguments. I want to know the reasons to believe something. And if I have the opportunity to talk to someone about it, then I'm going to jump at the chance because I'm going to be so excited. But I hope that I'm not being argumentative in my approach. If I'm, if I'm right, you know, Christianity is true then, hey, that's great. But if I'm never able to communicate that to someone else in a way that they would also want to believe what I believe, then I've really become very ineffective. Even though I might be right, am I really doing anything good with my knowledge? Or am I kind of wasting it? Uh, not everything that's true needs to be said at all times or in, or as abrasively as we might want to put it. You know, that we want to speak the truth in love and we want to be winsome in our approach when we're talking to people we disagree with. The ideal, at least, is would be that when we speak to someone we disagree with, that they would hear what we have to say, that it would resonate with them, and that they would want to, in the end, in the end, they would want to believe what we believe. I think in the past, I've probably been argumentative to the point that I've turned people off. And I don't want to be like that. I would love to pattern my behavior after Jesus. You know, I don't think I'll ever be on his level of communication, obviously, but I would love to at least tr my goal would be to try to approach things the way that Jesus approached them. The, the religious leaders of Jesus' day, they were often, well, they were always upset with him about a million things. But one of the things that they would always com complain about was that he would associate with people that they considered sinners, prostitutes, tax collectors. It's always funny to me how much tax collectors are mentioned in the Bible and at that time, it was the common thought was that tax collectors would come and ask you, tell you that you owed more in taxes than you really owed. And then whatever extra you paid them, because you thought you had to pay your taxes, they would pocket for themselves. So they were seen as essentially thieves. But Jesus, he would spend time with these tax collectors. Matthew, one of the writers of one of the gospels in the Bible, one of Jesus' closest followers was a tax collector. And Jesus spent time with many tax collectors, even tax collectors that were not believers in him. They were just regular guys. Uh, he would go and have dinner with them. And the Pharisees, the religious leaders of his time, would be complaining, you know, how can you associate with these undesirables, these terrible people, these sinners? But I think Jesus understood that, you know, it was not that Jesus believed that being a thief or, uh, in, you know, Taking advantage of people just because you're a tax collector would be a good thing. And he, Jesus was not going to water down his message. If somebody said, hey, do you think that the way that tax collectors uh, conduct themselves these days is right? He would, of course, say no. But that wasn't going to keep him from trying to develop some type of relationship. See, Jesus, he often developed relationships with people who may not have agreed with him or didn't fully understand what his teachings were. I think there's a, a key to that. You know, when we develop a relationship with someone, when we have a close friendship with someone, if we then get to the point where we're having a religious conversation and there's a disagreement between us, our past relationship with that person, that that friendship, that relationship, whatever it is, will hopefully help that person to remember that when we're speaking to them, we we love them. We this is not when we disagree on a religious level. This isn't out of some type of animosity or judgmental. Um, type of attitude. This is just a, a disagreement, but our relationship still stands. At least if we conduct ourselves well. And I think that this was the idea that Jesus had was that he would develop relationships, but then he would still speak the truth. I think we can develop relationships actually to the point where we almost uh, become our own worst enemy. We're, if we're so careful to protect a relationship, we may be fearful to even speak the truth, to talk to, to people about Christianity, about the areas we disagree, because we fear uh, ruining the relationship. but And if we took that to the extreme, then we might never, even though we would develop a great relationship with someone, we might never tell them the truth that they really need to hear. If Christianity is true, then all people need God, need Jesus. And so to 
to have a close friendship with someone but never speak to them about Jesus, well, that's sad too. And I know I've fallen into that uh, category myself. I've got many people in my life that I haven't really spoken much about these issues with. And really that, I don't want to become so, so focused on a relationship that become ineffective. Jesus, though, he was not ineffective. See, he would not water down his theology, his teachings. In fact, Jesus was often somewhat abrasive in his speaking when when the time called for it. When the religious leaders who were constantly complaining and persecuting Jesus, when they came to him, he would not hold back and say, that, you know, keep it to himself, his opinion, that they were hypocrites, people who spoke about all these loving things about God and religion, but didn't practice what they preached. He would tell to them straight, he, he wasn't afraid, he wasn't going to water down his message in order to make a friend, but he wasn't going to be so focused on the message that he didn't make the friend if it was possible. I think there's some type of uh, uh, tension there between speaking the truth. We don't want to water down our Christianity or or be afraid to speak about our Christianity, but also we want to maintain relationships with people who do not agree with us. People who might be have even animosity towards religion. We still want to have good relationships with those people. It's a fine line to walk. It's one that I've struggled with, but I think that this is the goal where all, we should all be trying to shoot for. Let's develop relationships because any type of truth that's communicated within a relationship, it's going to be so much more winsome. You know, when somebody that I care about and, and respect or trust tells me something's true, I'm much more quick to, to believe it or trust that where they're coming from is good because I know them. They wouldn't tell me something crazy and they wouldn't be rude to me if there wasn't a good reason. So if they say something that I disagree with, I know they're not saying it to upset me. They, they just disagree. This is just an area of disagreement. I'm sure that they feel the same in reverse. But I also want to be bold. When the time comes, I want to be ready. You know, the Bible has, the New Testament has a, a essentially a, gu a guidance or a commandment for Christians. It, the New Testament says that always be ready. We should always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks us about why we have hope, why we have the hope of Jesus. If anyone asks us, why are we Christians? We should be ready. That's what the Bible says. We should be ready to give a good answer, an answer that hopefully that they're going to be able to hear and maybe respond to. But I wonder, I mean, how many strangers are just going to come up and ask us about Jesus? Really, I think that that relationship, that good relationship we have with somebody, that can open the door. Then our close friend who's seen us be a Christian, at some point, maybe, hopefully, they're willing to ask us. They would want to be curious, why are we Christians? And then in those moments, whether it be big or small moments, I don't want us to drop the ball. I want us to be courageous and be able to take advantage, whatever whatever uh, little moment we have, to speak some type of truth to them that they can hear. And hopefully this this mixture of speaking the truth, not watering down Christianity, not, not pulling our punches, but still maintaining robust relationships. Hopefully this is the place where God is going to use us to speak some truth that someone's actually going to be able to hear.